What's going on guys? Beastly Gamer here. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about a fan or being a fanboy. I really don't care what I am called by the masses. But uh, we had a show, the Beastly Thought Show that came out last Sunday at 6. And we talked about this briefly for about 5 or 10 minutes. What video game fans are and uh, the pros and cons of being a fan. And uh, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit and give you guys a little bit of me personally who I am and why I am the way that I am. Uh, I'm called a PlayStation fan and that's that's fine with me I really don't care uh, I was called a Super Nintendo fan when I was a teenager it doesn't really bother me but the thing is I wanted to tell you guys why I, I usually talk more positively about the PlayStation brand than I do the Xbox brand and especially now now before the Xbox one came out I was a big 360 fan I got two 360s in, in the living room and uh, I, I really enjoyed it, I got my Xbox, and I had a great time with it. Now, when the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One were coming out to be released, my in initial plan was to have them both on release date. That was going to be the plan. I uh, am a big gamer, I love it, and, um, you know, when E3 came about and I started to see the games, I was like, oh yeah, this is mine. But when Microsoft shot themselves in the foot of E3 and started, you know, to basically say, if you buy this game, you don't really own the game. Uh, you can do certain things with it, but there are going to be things that we're not going to let you do. Also, you need to check with us before you do this. And you need to do this, and you got to have your camera watching you. And you got it didn't feel like it was going to be my system at that point. It felt like I was giving them money to rent a system that had all kinds of crazy restrictions, and it was still going to be there somehow. And that really pissed me off. And that might be my issue. I might hold grudges longer than other people, okay? And uh, that probably is my problem, but it is what it is. PlayStation came out, they had a completely different agenda. They were more open in the system. It was a very beautiful system. Uh, cheaper system, had exclusives on it that I was going to be excited about. You know, some of the exclusives on the Xbox One were not, you know, really my kind of games. When I saw Rise, of course, Rise is a very attractive game, but it's just not my kind of game. It's like Troy. I just, those are not my kinds of games. Um, when I saw Forza, it looked really good, but I'm not really a racer kind of guy, you know. When I saw um, uh, Dead Rising, I, I mean, I have the other Dead Risings. It just looked very similar, and I was like, this doesn't really speak next gen to me. And so when I saw the Xbox One, I was like, yeah, you know, at this point now, especially after this whole DRM thing, I'll probably just wait on it. And it pissed me off because I wanted to get them both. But when I was looking at the PS4 and I was thinking about all the games on it, you know, Uncharted coming to the PS4, that's a known. God of War is coming, that's a known, right? The Last of Us, a possibility, but that's worth it by itself. Uh, the Last Guardian uh, coming up, you know, from Team Eco. I was like, okay, this is going to be, this is going to be the shit. This is something I need to have. And so, you know, through time and me not forgetting, because uh, some of the guys on the show have forgotten this whole thing, or it doesn't really matter that Microsoft actually tried to do this. Me personally, I kind of keep my eyes open to what the intentions of a company are. If I know you intended to do this, then more than likely in the future you're going to try to do it again. And so I, I kind of stayed more in a defensive posture, which in turn turned me into a Sony fan. And that's just what it is. But the thing is, I feel that these companies actually need to have fans. If they don't have fans, then we're going to be sterile. We're going to be like uh, the guys in Dragon Age who don't have any personality. I think the guy's name was Lil Wayne in Dragon Age. My name is Lil Wayne. And he was sterile. He didn't have any, any emotions. If we don't have any emotions, then basically the companies won't care. They're going to be like, okay, they're going to buy what their friends buy, whatever. But if they know they got people out there rooting for them and, and they got a fan base, then they're going to work hard to keep you a fan. And that's just the human nature. What is a fanboy? And why is it so wrong to be a fanboy when it comes to video games, but it's so acceptable to be a fanboy in other things? I mean, look at a majority of men in America. They're football fanboys. They walk around, they got the hats on, the coats on. They talk about each player like they know him personally, right? Basketball, same thing. Soccer, same thing. And, and baseball, the same thing. We can be fans of something that's so far out of our reality other than the fact we watch it on TV. And it's totally normal. We get together and drink beer and go out to the bar and watch and talk. And, and that's totally normal. But if a person has, a, has an affinity towards a video game console over another, oh, grow up. 
Oh, don't be like that. It's just a game. And you're right, it is just a game. But so is football. So is basketball. But it's totally acceptable when it comes to those mediums of entertainment. But for some reason, if you're a fan of a video game system or a video game developer or console, you, you somehow become childish. Now, I, the difference for me between a fan and a fanboy is this. A fanboy is someone who can't see logic. They can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, if, if any type of good news about the competitor bounces off them like you know like a reflector shield and uh, all they see is their product and and anything else is bad that's a fanboy they can't they don't understand logic a fan is someone who has an affinity towards something for a reason and for me it's a legitimate reason now if you like Xbox that's totally fine Marco a good friend of mine Unreal Gamer likes the Xbox and he's a fan of the Xbox and it's much respected. I respect him for the fact that he says, hey, look, I like this. This is why I like this. And I'm like, that's awesome. We're both great friends. We both sit on two different sides of the table. We get together and we have a ball. And that's what being a fan is. And uh, I think that being a fan is something that's needed in this in this uh, field of entertainment. I don't think we should all just say, oh, well, just buy what you're going to buy and just be quiet. No. If there's something that you like more than the other, speak up. If you like Nintendo, I like Nintendo. Enjoy your Nintendo. I think it's great that you love Nintendo. Keep Nintendo alive. I want to do my part to keep all these consoles alive. I will own my Xbox One, but when they have a game that comes out that I actually want to play. And now Titanfall was the game I wanted to play, but now it's out on 360 today. And like I said, like Not Too Nerdy said, the game looks just as good on 360 as it does on the Xbox One. And so Microsoft, good job there by submerging the visuals of the game you probably got a lot of people buying the Xbox One but now some might be a little upset when they see the 360 version and so I'm heavily considering grabbing it on 360 because of how good it looks I just wanted to let you guys know that you know what a fanboy is to me what I consider myself and what you guys consider me leave it in the comments below uh, I will get an Xbox One sooner than later I promise and I'm working on grabbing my Wii real soon too I'll let you guys know how that goes I'm the Beastly Gamer and I'm passionate about Sony. <laughs> See you guys next time.